welcome. Uh, as a pastor of this church, I'd like to personally welcome each and every one of you to this uh, worship service with us today. And I'd like to remind you uh, that the whole purpose of uh, here at St. George's is to love God and to love people. Uh, so as we come together uh, this day, let us all keep in our hearts and minds all of those that are suffering around this nation and the world. So uh, shall we start our time together in prayer? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this amazing day. And we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We ask now, oh God, that your presence may be felt in this place in a real tangible way. So as we continue into this new year, we ask that you would watch over each and every one of us and keep us protected from all unrighteousness. Now I ask, oh God, that you just bless your manservant here and now. I ask, oh God, that you help me and to bless the words that come out of my mouth so that may indeed be acceptable in your sight. You are indeed my rock and my redeemer. For it is in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. And now, if you would uh, join us in praying the Lord's Prayer. Uh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And next, if you will, will you join me in affirming your faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The reading today is John 1, 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Gap. Before Galilee, finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip and Andrew, like Andrew and Peter, from the town of Bathsheba, Philip found Nathan and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked, come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you, I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our sermon title for today's scripture reading is an invitation to discipleship. Earlier in this particular chapter, John the Baptist and two of his disciples, well, they saw Jesus. As he passed, John said these words, Behold the Lamb of God. In response, two of John's disciples followed Jesus. As described, in the text, one of those disciples was Andrew. We know very little about Andrew, but what we do know is this, is that he brought his brother Simon, Simon Peter, to Jesus. And later, Andrew will also bring the boy with the five loaves and two fish, which Jesus will feed the multitude. On both occasions, Andrew plays a huge behind-the-scene role that makes a significant contribution to the ministry. When Andrew brings Peter to Jesus, Jesus says, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. In Aramaic, Cephas means rock. But in Greek, Cephas means Peter. By calling Peter the rock, Jesus pays Peter a huge compliment. But at this stage, Peter is nothing like the rock that he will become after the resurrection. However, today's text, verse 43 says, The next day Jesus decided to leave. From Galilee, finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Isn't it amazing how Jesus finds Philip rather than the other way around? The same is true for us today. Jesus finds us wherever we may be, and he extends the same invitation, follow me. Then we learn in verse 44 that Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. The town of Bethsaida sits at the northern edge of 10 Greek cities just east of the Jordan River. This probably explains Philip and Andrew's Greek names. And later, when a group of Greeks want to see Jesus, they will indeed ask Philip and Andrew for an introduction. Verse 45. 
Verse 45 states, Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Notice, just as Andrew witnessed earlier to Peter, Philip is now witnessing to Nathanael. Philip is telling Nathanael that he has found the one that the scriptures for centuries have been telling them was to come. The Messiah. The Messiah was now in their midst. Which leads us to point number one. We have to be a witness. If you recall, the witnessing started it started with John the Baptist and now continues with Andrew and Philip. It's almost like John started a ripple that continues to widen with each successive disciple. The result is not a tidal wave, however, but over time, the name of Jesus will sweep across this entire world just by the beginning of witnessing. Yet in verse 46, Nathaniel asks Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Then Philip said, come and see. Notice that Philip doesn't argue. He doesn't argue with Nathaniel, but instead he invites. He invites him to come and see. Perhaps we can learn from Philip. We can't argue our faith or what we believe. Instead, we are to invite others to witness for themselves. In my opinion, David put it this way and the best way. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Church family, sometimes folks just have to see for themselves that the Lord is indeed good. As recommended, Nathaniel accepts the invitation to see Jesus. Then in verse 47, the Bible says, When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. With this simple phrase, Jesus indicates to his listeners that Nathaniel is a person of truth and integrity. The Bible doesn't really tell us why Jesus said what he said about Nathaniel, but what we do know is that God, who oh God knows everything about us, big and small, good and not so good. He even knows the number of hair on our head. So that's point number two. God is all knowing, church. He knows everything. Then in verse 48, Nathaniel asked, How do you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you. I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip even called you. Now keep in mind, back in those days, under the fig tree was a phrase. It was, it was a phrase that rabbis used to describe meditating on the scriptures. So we can take great comfort in knowing that Nathaniel spent time. He spent time in prayer and, and meditating on the scriptures of the word of God. And Jesus wanted him to know that he also knew. Following that amazing revelation, Nathaniel declared in verse 48, Rabbi, you are indeed the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Now, earlier in the chapter, Andrew identified Jesus as the Messiah. Now it's Nathaniel's turn. Now Nathaniel bestows upon Jesus three even additional titles. Rabbi, Son of God, and the King of Israel. Church family, Jesus is indeed our teacher as well. 
and he is indeed divine, and he is indeed royalty from on high. Now, in verse 50, Jesus goes on to say, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. Most scholars believe that this statement of greater things leads us directly into Jesus' first miracle at the wedding in Cana, which revealed his glory and helped others to believe. Countless great things will take place throughout Jesus' ministry. However, none will be greater than his resurrection and ascension into heaven. And it will be at that point that they will fully understand and believe in the name of Jesus. Finally, in verse 51, Jesus then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus' statement is an indication that the time the time has come for God's revelation to be made known upon the earth. It was witnessed at Jesus' baptism, and later it will be indeed witnessed at the resurrection. Just as God opened the heavens to reveal himself, God also opens the heavens to heal the sick, to restore sight to the blind, bend relationships, transform lives, rescue souls in the person of Christ Jesus. Which leads us to our third and our final point. Jesus indeed saves. All we must do, church, is to believe upon the name, that name that is above every name, at the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that every knee will bow and tongue will confess that he is indeed. But he's more than Lord. He's our Savior. So, again, as we depart from this place, but never from the Spirit of God, let us remember three things. One, be a witness. Two, God is all-knowing. And three, Jesus saves. So be it. Amen. And now for the benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, may all power and dominion be thine. Amen. <laughs>